So far on this channel, I've talked about what pirates were doing when they were at sea, but where did they go after they filled up their holds with stolen cargo or precious metals? Well, if you were a pirate in the late 1600s, the number one destination you'd want to visit would have been Port Royal, Jamaica. A little backstory about Port Royal. Prior to Columbus, the Tanyo natives used the area around Port Royal for fishing, but it's not known if they actually settled there. In 1494, the Spanish landed on Jamaica, and in 1509, a group of people settled in Port Royal. They didn't have much use for it outside of cultivating and processing sugarcane. The main reason the Spanish were on Jamaica was to keep the other European powers from being able to get a foothold in the Caribbean. In 1655, Port Royal was captured by the English invasion of Jamaica, and by 1659, 200 houses, shops, and warehouses had been set up. During this time, the governor of Jamaica, Edward Dioli, welcomed pirates to base in Port Royal. These pirates were largely made up of buccaneers, who had been living on Hispaniola and hunting wild pigs until the Spanish threw them out. These men wanted to get back at the Spanish, and the English were happy to help them out with that. The English quickly granted letters of marque, turning the buccaneers into legal English privateers, and then started ordering raids on the Spanish. By doing this, they found a way to defend Port Royal without having to spend much money at all. The Spanish were unable to retake Jamaica due to the pirates protecting it. That, combined with the pirates attacking their ships, drove up the demand for goods in Spain. The merchants on Jamaica would initiate trade with the Spanish and then have the privateers attack the vessels to steal it back. This was making Port Royal one of the wealthiest English colonies in North America. In 1668, Henry Morgan sacked Portobello and returned to Port Royal with a plunder worth 75,000 pounds, which was worth more than seven times the annual value of Jamaica's sugar exports. Port Royal was appealing to pirates due to the close proximity to trade routes, giving them easy access to prey, as well as the proximity to several of the only straits between the Spanish Main and the Atlantic. The harbor was large and had a place to careen their ships. By the 1660s, Port Royal was known as Sodom of the New World, and most of the people who lived there were pirates, merchants, or prostitutes. Charles Leslie wrote a history of Jamaica and described Port Royal like this. Wine and women drained their wealth to such a degree that some of them became reduced to beggary. They have been known to spend two or three thousand pieces of eight in one night, and one gave a strumpet five hundred to see her naked. They used to buy a pipe of wine, place it in the street, and oblige everyone that passed to drink. At its height, Port Royal had one drinking house for every ten residents, and in July 1661 alone, forty new licenses were granted for taverns. Up until 1692, around 6,500 people lived in Port Royal. There were two thousand buildings and only fifty-one acres of land. As available land decreased, people would either fill in areas of water with sand or build taller. The buildings became heavier as people built with bricks, mimicking the construction style of England. On June 7, 1692, an earthquake struck Jamaica, causing most of the northern section of Port Royal to be lost. The earthquake caused the sand to liquefy and flow out into the harbor. In the 1960s, a pocket watch was recovered that was stopped at 1143, and along with supporting evidence, it is believed this is the exact time the earthquake struck. When the earthquake occurred, the liquefaction would have made the ground look like quicksand, and eyewitness accounts attested a building sliding into the sea. After the earthquake, there was a tsunami, and many dead bodies were left to float in the harbor. No housing, medicine, or clean water caused many more residents to die of various illnesses. The earthquake and tsunami killed between 1,000 and 3,000 people, and over the next few months, an additional 2,000 died. Attempts to rebuild the city to its former glory were largely unsuccessful, but Port Royal was still in use for years. Although, instead of a sanctuary for pirates, the English government started to imprison and hang them there. Gallows Point was the final resting place for pirates like Charles Vane and Jack Rackham, and Mary Reed died in prison there. In 1774, Port Royal was, once again, destroyed, but this time due to a major hurricane. By 1774, Kingston had become much more important. Finally, in 1907, a massive earthquake liquefied the sand once again, destroying nearly all the rebuilt city. There is an archaeological presence, and in 1981, Texas A&M began a 10-year investigation. Thanks to their efforts, we have learned much about the everyday life in English colonial cities from the time. Some consider Port Royal to be the most important underwater archaeological site in the Western Hemisphere due to the amount of artifacts and how well they're preserved. From nothing to a major pirate outpost and back to obscurity again, Port Royal has seen its ups and downs. Recently, Jamaica has built a cruise ship terminal in Port Royal, complete with a floating pier to prevent damaging the historical artifacts below. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please give us a like and hit that subscribe button. We also have a link to our PayPal and Patreon below, and if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment for us.